Hi guys, uh, welcome, welcome back to my channel. I'm, uh, I'm down. <laughs> I don't know where I am actually, but I'm down somewhere. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm out and about today with the pinhole camera that I purchased at Spitterfields Market in London. On my last video you'll see uh, me buying the pinhole camera and I couldn't wait to try it out. And although a lot of people gave me some good ideas and tips and, and places to research how to use it, I thought, well, the best way, I've never used one before, so I just thought the best way is to just come out, load a roll of film, do no research whatsoever and see how I get on. So that's pretty much my idea. That's the pinhole behind me. And I'm down a place called the Dover on the Isle of Wight, which is, um, I don't know, it's just a load of waste ground and water. Um, I don't know why it's called the Dover. It's bloody windy as well. So uh, I'm going to be shooting a roll of this Cat Labs film which is um which i believe is i've read on, i've read online and i think it's shanghai gp3 and if it is i like that film um i don't know about the emulsions whether they've changed anything or whatever but it says it's a an iso 80 rated film but i'm going to rate this film at 100 like the uh, shanghai gp3 is i think it's 100 but i'm going to rate it at 100 anyway um so i'll just show you that what i'm going to be shooting and then for the first time, I'll show you me shooting this pinhole camera and see how we get on. So I'm going to be taking pictures of this old wrecked boat. Uh, this thing has been here for donkey's years. And it's probably photographed more than the Queen by people. I can only imagine at some point in the near future, this thing's going to be taken away because it's, it's proper broken up and rusty. Um, this is for unscrewing the top so you can load the film in and this is for winding the film on your pinhole is underneath this uh, shutter release here i'm not on the first frame yet so i'm good to go there and at the back of the pinhole camera you've got this little window you flap open and you can advance to your next frame but there's no red window inside which i found a bit strange but uh, hopefully the backing paper will protect the film when i'm doing so the, the size of the pinhole is 0.2 millimeters the aperture is f150 you know, so with an aperture that small, or pinhole that small, I'm hoping to get everything in focus, but because it's so small, it's gonna take time for the light to reach the film and burn into the film, and hopefully we should get some nice long exposure shots with the clouds and stuff like that. We'll soon see, I suppose, but I've got a nice little information chart, uh, which the company give you on, um, on their leaflet to give you some idea of exposure times. So it says for a 100 ISO film, Bright sunshine is two seconds. Hazy sunshine is four seconds. Cloudy bright, which is probably what it is today, eight seconds. And cloudy overcast would be 15 seconds. But obviously, depending on what film you're shooting, you've got to allow for reciprocity failure as well. Uh, because I'm shooting this Cat Labs film, I researched that online, and I reckon it's got the same reciprocity failure as FP4 and I've shot FP4 long exposures before, so I need to allow for reciprocity. So if I'm gonna do four seconds, it's gonna be six seconds. If I do eight seconds, it's gonna be 14. If I do 15 seconds, it's gonna be a 30 second exposure, allowing for the reciprocity uh, failure times. So uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. So I'm about to advance the film onto frame one, and it's quite windy, like I said, I don't know how it's coming from the microphone. I apologize if it sounds pants, but I can't help that. Um, I've got a real sturdy tripod, holding the camera so hopefully I won't get any any shake um, during these long exposures but I'm gonna cheat well not cheat really I'm just gonna bracket my shot so I'm gonna go through the exposure values because I don't know I don't want to come away from here first time using this and have some really rubbish results I'd rather see some good negatives and that way it's gonna make me feel more confident next time I use the camera so instead of taking you know looking up and saying oh it's a bit hazy I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for eight seconds I'm gonna go through the um, all four different exposure times and see what I'll get on the negatives. That way I'm bound to get one shot that, uh, that I can print anyway. So let's advance the frame to number one. Let's open the lid. There's no squeaky noises. I don't know if you can see inside the hole there, but 
Ah, here we go. Uh, looking for number one. I should get some flowers or something, and then oh, arrows. Oh, dots. Okay, we get dots. Frame number one. So I'm going to do four sets of exposures, two seconds, six seconds, 14 and 30 seconds, and I'm going to time this on my watch. So uh, see how we get on. I've done four shots. I've got another eight shots to do in that roll of film. After that, I'm then gonna change films over and use Acros. Now, with the Acros 100, you don't have to apply or um, compensate for any reciprocity failure, I believe so, um, not for quite some time. So, if I'm gonna be shooting 15 seconds, I don't need to um, uh, compensate with any reciprocity failure extra times with the Acros 100, that's what I believe. So, um, we'll soon see, I suppose, eh? One, two. One, two, three, four, five, ten. So I've just changed composition now, bearing in mind that um, with a pinhole it's going to be a very large depth of field everything should be in focus uh, within reason so I've placed the camera just near these reeves which are blowing in the wind and obviously the clouds are going to move and the the boat ain't going to move because that's bloody solid so hopefully things will be moving around motion blur if you like apart from the boat so uh, just be interesting to see how much depth of field I can get out of out of this shot here so I'm just going to wait for that sun to bugger off for a minute behind the cloud when it does I'll start my exposures same again uh, two seconds six seconds 15 and 30 seconds I'm now gonna see if I can load the Acros inside and this Acros was kindly sent to me by Brian Copeland Photography in Canada. Brian, thank you very much, mate. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm gonna use your Acros on these shots over that way. This expires in October 2019, so it should be good. And I don't need to muck around with any reciprocity time, so my time's gonna be shorter using this film. Oh, so I'm now out of the wind. Um, uh, I've come over to this little wooded area, a little bit of a shaded area from the wind, and I'm gonna take, be taking photographs of these dead trees. So you can see my composition, a uh, little bit of reeves and the dead trees and hopefully a little bit of cloud going past as well. So that's the first time that I've ever used a pinhole camera and I must say that I quite enjoyed the experience. It's certainly different than using mechanical cameras and stuff. Um, it was easy, just point it at the target, open the shutter and close it, uh, wind the film on, um, job done, you know. I did have to be very careful because it was windy and I didn't want the camera to shake during long exposures and I certainly had to be careful when I was opening and closing the shutter. Um, and I did notice when I developed the negatives and scanned them using my DSLR that I did actually was getting soft focus on the scans that were coming through and I wasn't sure if that was the DSLR being slightly out of focus or whatever. Um, but then a little bit more research, I read that most pinhole photography is um, soft focus. So that's one thing I think I'm gonna to have to accept when I'm shooting this camera, but it's certainly not gonna put me off. I'll just have to go out and be a bit more creative and try different things that's gonna shoot this kind of photography. 
So I'll just show you some of the scans that I did on the DSLR and some of my favorite photographs from that session down at the Dover. Now I did up the sharpness in Lightroom, so these are gonna be quite noisy images. So these are my three favorite compositions of the boat that was taken on the Cat Labs film. And the second one and the third one. And then I put the Acros 100 film in and went off and shot some deadwood, the trees, and also some beach huts as well. So other than the DSLR scans, the real proof in the pudding is going to be in the darkroom, and that's what I did. I brought the negatives into the darkroom, started making some test prints, and this was the very first print that I came out with. You can see that there. Um, it's, it, it is quite soft focus, and it is what it is. But, uh, you know, this was only a test print, lack of contrast going on. So I had to do a lot of jiggery pokery in the darkroom to get a final print. And I managed to do that. So I'm just going to show you the darkroom session um, and let you guys see what I was doing in the darkroom. And I'll come back and show you the final prints that I made. So this is the image that I've chosen to make a print of. It's the one that I put on Instagram and albeit I did some jiggery pokery in Photoshop uh, to sharpen it up. But you know, it don't look that great on a, on a computer. I want to make this as a, as a print. And being a pinhole camera, one thing I've learned is, you know, they're, they're soft focus. They're not going to be tack sharp, or at least not, not the pinhole that I've got. Um, but it doesn't matter. I'm still going to have fun with it in the future. But uh, let's concentrate on this print, and I'll show you how I got um, what, what, what I'm going to be doing with this print anyway. So I've got the aperture set at f4 at the moment on the enlarger, so you can so this is bright enough for you guys to see. Um, so you can see the sky is very dense. Uh, we've got this water area here that I need to work on, and I've also got this area that I want to highlight. So I'll try and want to replicate what I've done on uh, on Photoshop, but in the darkroom. So when I get making the print, I'm going to pull the aperture right down to f16, so you can see it goes really dark, and hopefully pull a little bit of sharpness back. Um, so I'm having to work uh, for longer times, but I'll go through all this in a moment when you see me do it in real time. So let's bring it back up for now, and I'll show you what I'll be doing. So I'm going to be using uh, some split grading. I'm going to use a contrast zero filter, and then I'm going to be using a contrast five filter. Um, I've already done, done some tests with those, so it's quite a long time. They're going to be 30 seconds with contrast zero, and then 15 seconds with contrast five. That's going to be my rock to stand on, and then from there I can start working on uh, the other areas of the print, which is going to be the sky. Now I'm going to take for the sky. I'm going to be taking all the filters out. So I'm going to uh, burn the sky in with no filters. That's going to be 30 seconds. But then I'm going to put the contrast five filter back in just for another 30 seconds to burn the sky back in again. And then I'm going to be working on the water area because that's uh, that needs burning in a little tiny bit. And for that I'm going to be using uh, this card with a hole in it so that I can just burn that area of the water in. And that's going to be about 20 seconds with no filter. And then once I've um, burned in the sky and burned in the water area, I'm then going to just make a vignette by using this tool up against the lens. And you can see what happens. I just want to try and make a vignette to burn these areas in a little tiny bit. But I do have to be careful up here in this area because uh, you can see it's lighter. I don't know if you can see it on the cameras, but it's lighter than the rest of the sky, uh, which means it's darker in, in real life. So I'm gonna have to do less on there, otherwise that'll just go jet black, and I don't really want that. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky, um, but hopefully I'll get around it. And then once I've done that, I then need to burn in the bushes in the background as well, using the same burn card that I've used with a hole in it, and just go along the bush areas, as you can see, like so just to blacken them up. So but before I do all that, uh, this is this is the 10 by 10 inch print that I'm making. I'm using 16 by 12 Kentmere paper. And when I do my first um, exposure, which is gonna be on the contrast, or well, the split grade on the contrast zero and contrast five, I'm just gonna use this tool here and I'm just gonna stop the light hitting these areas because these are white, these are like white little rocks um, that I found there. So I kind of want them to show up just to give a bit more contrast in the print. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I've just thrown the lights back on to show you the template that I'm using. So this is my 10 by 10 uh, template that I've made out of some photo mat board. And I'll simply just place the uh, 16 by 12 paper underneath there. And that's, um, I've measured the enlarger f for this aperture size here. So I'm not cropping any of the image at all. And then afterwards, I'm just going to place the card inside. Like so, burst white light on it. And that will give me my black border around the edge of the print just to finish it off. Okay, so without further ado, let's try and make this print. It's a little bit tricky with the video cameras in place, so if my hands get in the way, I'm sorry, guys. So first thing to do is get my aperture on my lens down to f16, and there it is. It's probably gone dark. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, it's tricky. I'll turn the red light on. 
Or shall I leave it off? I don't know. Can you see that? <laughs> you can't see, it's so dark. I'll put the red light on so you can see something there. Um, but I've given you an example of what I'm doing. So let's turn the... First of all, I'm going to put the contrast filter in. Start off with the contrast zero. Let's get some paper out. This is Kentmere VC Select Lustra paper. And I've already done the focusing on it. It's quite hard to focus on these prints because they're not tack sharp. So I'm having to use my brain focuser just to, just to pick out the grain for focusing. So let's put the paper inside. Papers inside and this little bit here on the edge, I'll cut that off and use that for test strips another time. Put that in my test strip box and I'll just put these angle weights down that I've covered, they're metal and I've covered them with uh, black electrical tape, A to stop them rusting and B, <laughs> there's no other reason, there ain't no B. Stop them rusting basically, right there on there. That's going to hold the template down so light's not going to seep underneath. They're quite heavy. And I'm just going to, I just waft all the time like the, like so. If there's any little bits of hair that's just fallen onto that paper, it'll be gone. So uh, first projection is going to be 30 seconds. And I'm just going to use my dodge tool here just to stop any light hitting the, underneath the boat. So we'll see how we get on. Right, so just a little bit. Not too much. Okay, contrast five time. Lovely, I've just dropped the contrast filter on the paper. That shouldn't make any difference. I need to get that off though without touching the paper really. Hmm, tricky. Um, this should be fun. Okay, contrast five uh, for another 30 seconds. Sorry, 15 seconds for contrast five. And that's just going to pop the blacks a little bit for me. I can hardly see the print now, but I know roughly where I'm dodging. Okay, take the contrast five filter out now. And I'm going to be working with no filters now. It's time to work on the sky. And for the sky, I'm just going to come up two stops on the enlarger, make it a little bit brighter. Um, and that's going to be 30 seconds. If I left it F16, it would have took a lot longer. So, um, but it's only sky, so it's not going to make much difference at all um, to sharpness or anything like that. So I'm just going to turn this red light off, guys, so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to burn the sky in now for 30 seconds with no filter. If you can see that. Well, I've got to be careful just on that corner. So I'm just blending off that corner a bit. Just going to cover that corner of my hands a bit. I'm going to use the uh, little tiny hole circular burn tool just to burn in that lake for 20 seconds with no filter. Okay, so I'm just burning the lake. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just waving that hole. So the light is coming from the enlarger through the negative and burning into that lake area. Hopefully that'll just give us some detail in the lake rather than the inertia of the paper. Okay, and the same again, I'm just gonna now free hand no timer just going to go across that the black part of the uh, bushes at the back and i'm just waving the card just gently over the bushes at the back and the last thing to do is to use the dodge tool and just give it a slight vignette in around the edge not too crazy but just enough to make that boat pop but i've got to be careful of the uh sky at the top right
and last thing to do big ass helicopter going over the royal family of cows in the Isle of Wight at the moment There's probably security going over for them so I'm just going to lay this down this is going to give me my uh, black border if it looks really bad um, too dark or whatever I'll probably do a reprint but if I'm happy when it comes out the developer I'm not one of those guys going to fuss around trying to make a perfect print as long as I'm happy with it then that's all that matters okay let's uh, burst some white light onto it that's giving us a black border off with the white light time for developing And she goes, put the timer on, two minutes. And let the magic begin. So the first part to get dark is the top right hand corner. And it's looking nice. I'm just concerned about the top right hand corner being too dark. Okay, I'll let that go for the two minutes. Stop, fix, wash, and I'll show you what it looks like. So after all that, these are the final prints that I made. And I've made, uh, I wouldn't say mistakes, but there's just certain parts that I wanted to change. And that was this dark area here. I didn't want to get that, that dark area. I'm just trying to look down at the camera. I didn't want to get that dark area... I didn't really want that dark area in the print, so I started to work on this. So uh, this was kind of like my first print that I made. It's a bit too dark anyway. And then I went off and tried a second print. And again, I just couldn't seem to sort out that dark area in the corner, although my highlights started to pop underneath the boat and uh, things started to work pretty well. Went off and made another test print as well. Not test prints, these are hopefully prints <laughs> prints that I'll end up uh, finalising um, and you can see again this one was just a bit too dark in the corner and also a bit too light in this area as well so you can now see that I'm starting to have a little bit of trouble in the dark room it took me quite a while to get round to it this one I thought I'd near enough nailed and I just kind of over dodged that corner now and it's gone too light but persistence prevails because I ended up getting where I wanted to be with the final two prints. This one here, which I'm really happy with, that's exactly where I wanted it to be. And that's gonna be my print. And the final print, which was my master print, is this one here. And that one's been selenium toned and it's all ready to go. So I was really happy with this print, the outcome that I've done. Took, spent quite a bit of time in the darkroom making it. And I'm going to stick this one up on eBay for auction. If anyone wants to um, have a look on eBay and auction for this actual print that I'm holding up, um, please do so because it helps me in the darkroom with uh, buying more film and chemicals and cracking on with more videos. So this is the final print here. And this is the area I had trouble with. And I managed to get it back on this final print, uh, which I was really happy with in the end. You can see the highlight area here that I was... Uh, dodging at the start. This is the vignetted side that I threw, that, uh, I threw in. Uh, the water area, you can see that's where I um, used the little tiny card with the hole in. And also the black bushes as well. I tried to um, bring those details back in there and it's kind of worked. But as I say, it is uh, quite soft focus, but it is what it is. It's a pinhole, uh, pinhole photography print and I'm really happy with it. So above all, that was a really good experience. As I said earlier, I really enjoyed shooting the pinhole camera. I've put some information at the bottom there so I don't have to carry that sheet about, um, just the exposure information. And I'm looking forward to going out and shooting this again, um, knowing that it's gonna have a soft focus. It's up to me to change my photography style, I suppose, to suit a pinhole print, um, if that makes sense. I don't know what that will be yet, but um, I don't know, we'll, we'll soon see. I can't imagine any, any architectural stuff where you want anything really tack sharp 
is going to work. But, um, you know, maybe some long exposures on the sea or, or reeves or something like that. Birds even in flight. <laughs> if you can catch birds in flight on it. I don't know. But I like it and I'm going to use it again. Anyway, guys, um, look out on eBay for uh, auction on that print. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I'll catch you later. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.